Oh man, I mean, can you believe that there was the Justice League? I mean, Batman was pulling in work. Mm -hmm. Aquaman was just like, mm -hmm. he was such a dude in that movie. Yeah, he's all right. They made Cyborg look like, that was probably the best CG I've ever seen for Cyborg and for the villain. These locations and everything was just, it was just great, man. Even though, wish they kept it more to the comic. It was better than Wonder Woman, if you ask me. I mean, I could watch Wonder Woman all day, but uh, anyway. Hey guys, I'm Jose. And I'm Jerome. And welcome to Import Legacy, where today we're going to be talking about Justice League. No, no we're not. What do you mean we're not? Today we're going to be talking about books and novels and comics that were converted into movies. And we just happen to have seen Justice League. And by the way, I thought it was great. Uh, I thought it was, I thought it was okay. Like, you know, they could have had kept Martian Manhunter in there, like in the comic, and maybe it would have been better, you know. Yeah, it's just an adaptation, you know. You ever heard of an adaptation? No, but what's an adaptation? Well, I'm glad you asked. An adaptation is when a book or a comic has been changed into an interpretation that works best for the medium it's being transferred to. Often that implies that a few necessary changes will be made in the process. A few? Yeah, I kind of agree with you. You know, the majority of the movies we see today started off as books or comics or novels, but a lot of people will argue that the book was better or that the movie should have stuck to the book. Anyway, it seems like the majority of the movies we see now started off as books or comics, you know, like from the Avengers to the Hunger Games. But a lot of people would argue that they should have stuck closer to the book and would have enjoyed it more if it was like that. Oh, I see. Well, I'm glad you bring that up. Because the movie Justice League was originally a comic book that sat around certain heroes such as The Flash, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, Martian Manhunter, and Aquaman. They were fighting against a parasite known as Starro from controlling the minds of humans and resorting their life force to fuel him. In today's Justice League film, it keeps the same battle for Earth aspects, but the roster changes, the villain changes, and it struggles to keep it along the lines of the Justice League New 52 reboot. Yeah, I guess we're really going to see a lot more of that. Especially with more international books and manga becoming increasingly more popular in the U.S. Like Harry Potter, The Ring, Ghost in the Shell, Avatar The Last Airbender, and Dread. No, no, don't say it. Just let it die. It's time to forget about that movie. Dragon Ball Evolution. No! Man, is it too much to ask for just one good book to movie adaptation? What do you mean, no good book movie adaptation? What the? Where'd that voice come I from? I don't know. Evanesco! What? Who are you? What? Where's Jose? The Harry Potter series started off as a phenomenal book series. Soon after, it was adapted into a series of films that, even with some points missing, turned out to be a huge success worldwide. But, wait. Harry Potter films included almost all of the details that were in the Harry Potter series. Most of the vital details were Harry Potter being an unintended horcrux, the relationships between Harry and Ginny and Ron and Hermione. While there were some fans who would have loved that Harry and Hermione stayed together, the movie script writers remained true to the story. Although admittedly, they could have included more scenes between Harry and Ginny to truly highlight more important points in their relationship that were in the novels. The one key ingredient to this Harry Potter saga was the love triangle involving Harry's parents and the legendary Severus Snape. In the novels, both Severus and James love Lily Evans. It is because of this bond that many of the story's plots happen. If James hadn't saved Snape from the Whomping Willow, those who read the books will get this, Snape wouldn't have been able to save his future son, Harry, during his first Quidditch match against Slytherin. Also, the Dark Lord might have never been vanquished had it not been for Snape's love for Lily and willingness to adventure. her. The one change that I, and I'm sure many fans, can't ever forgive is the change they made to the final battle between Harry and Lord Voldemort. Near the end of the seventh book, during the Battle of Hogwarts, Harry and Voldemort battle each other in the Great Hall, with everyone watching. Speaking of changes... Excuse me, right next to Hermione, Ginny, and Luna battling at the same time against Bellatrix Lestrange. After Molly intervenes and finishes off Bellatrix, Harry begins to speak out loud for everyone to hear why the Elder Wand didn't work for Voldemort when he tries killing Harry. He also makes sure to say that Snape was always Dumbledore's right-hand man. This is very different from the action sequences we got in the film, with Harry and Voldemort flying around Hogwarts in combat and landing on the outskirts where Harry finally finishes off Voldemort. No one else is watching. There's no doubt that the book's final battle would have been way better on screen than what the film's audience received. Silencio. Pardon me, but no muggle can silence me. 
Where is Jose? All right. Rebellio. Movie adaptation. Wait. What just happened? And who are you? Harry Potter has become a cultural icon all over the world. It's had that huge of an impact that Warner Brothers decided to make another film titled Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, which is based off one of the most anticipated films of this year. This is proof that relations between the U.S. and the U.K. have strengthened in relation since the film was made. This film made Warner Brothers a lot of money and now encourages casual moviegoers to be interested in the U.K. culture and seek out further foreign projects. Not only has it opened the doors, but we see a lot of influence um, in the films now, such as Chronicles of Narnia, Twilight, Nanny McPhee, Series of Unfortunate Events, um, all that good stuff. Nanny McPhee, what? I think she said McNuggets or something. Before Harry Potter's run, there weren't nearly as many UK feature films so prominent in the landscape. Just compare the success of the two Mr. Bean movies before and after Harry Potter. The first week numbers of the first Mr. Bean movie on, in 1997, around the time of the first Harry Potter movie, brought in a little over $2 million. But the first week numbers for a sequel in 2007, Mr. Bean's Holiday, brought in close to $10 million as the Harry Potter franchise had begun to pick up steam. In fact, to this day, The Last Harry Potter is still Warner Brothers' number one grossing film worldwide. There have been multiple attempts to emulate this formula with other successful books, like Percy Jackson series, but those would prove to be quickly unsuccessful. I like, I like the Percy Jackson series. Speaking of unsuccessful though, it's just like Dragon- No, no, not, in, not again, no. Yeah, I guess there were a few other successes other than Justice League. And it seems like the introduction of these new cultures is good for movies all around so we can appreciate the great work of movie art. Exactly. It's a necessary step to open the gateway for more movies that we can enjoy, even if the failures are all in the name of a great story to come. But who, seriously, who are you? This has been this week's Import Legacy. I hope you learned something about the importance of magic and what makes adaptation so special.